Turn with me in your Bible to Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10, starting at verse 35. We'll read Hebrews chapter 10, starting at verse 35, down to Hebrews chapter 11, verse 5. We'll go all the way, oh, about 10 scriptures. And uh, for so those of you all who don't know, I, I started a, a series on heroes of faith. Heroes of faith. God wants us to uh, examine uh, the heroes of faith, uh, the Old Testament saints, and so that the Old Testament saints can teach us something today, us New Testament saints, how to walk with God. Something about faith and what it means to, to believe God. Amen? Amen. Well, let's bow our head heads this morning in prayer. Father, we thank you and we praise you today. We thank you, Lord, for your goodness. We thank you, Lord, for your love. We thank you, Lord, for uh, just your day of worship, Lord, where we can come and we can, we can become transparent before you and we can, we can get a fresh word, a rhema word, a right now word, Father God, that will send us out of here with a, 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 a confidence, an assurance that, that what you said you was going to do, you're going to do it. So, Father, we thank you. I come against doubt. I come against unbelief. I come against anxiety and fear and overwhelming concerns, Father. I pray, Lord, that faith would rise up in, in the hearts of every listener. And every listener would hear what thus saith the Lord, what the Spirit of the God is saying to the churches. Father, we thank you and we praise you in Jesus' wonderful name. And every believer said, Amen. 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 Well, today we're going to look at... Uh, the subject of what it means to walk by faith. What it means to walk by faith. We're going to look at the Bible character by the name of Enoch. Enoch teaches us what it means to walk by faith. Amen? Amen. Hebrews chapter 10, starting at verse 35. If you dare say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Cast not away therefore your confidence, which has great recompense of reward. For you have need of patience that after you have done the will of God, you might receive the promise. Say, I'm going to receive the promise. I'm going to receive the promise. After I've done the will of God. After I've done the will of God. So the promise doesn't come before you doing the will of God. The promise comes after you doing the will of God. For, ye, for yet a little while, and he shall come and will not tarry. Now the just shall live by but if any man draw back my soul shall have no pleasure in him but we are not of them who draw back unto perdition or to failure but of them that believe to the saving of the soul now faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen for by it the elders obtain what kind of report? A good report. So the Old Testament, talking about the Old Testament elders, by walking by faith, obtain a good report or a good testimony. Or a good witness. Verse 3, through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. So that things which are, were, which are seen were not made of things which do appear. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and by it he being dead, yet speaketh. By faith, Enoch, we're going to talk about Enoch today, and we're going to see why he had faith and and why he pleased God. By faith Enoch was translated. That he should not see death. And was not found. Because God had translated him. For before his translation. He had this testimony. That he pleased God. I like Enoch and studying Enoch because there's only a few places in the Bible that talks about Enoch. In Genesis chapter 5, verse 21 through 24, is four verses that mention Enoch. And, and then in Jude chapter 1, verses 14 and 15, there's a, only two verses that talk about Enoch. And, and so we got to really search this thing out and find out why, why 
Eli, Enoch pleased God. And what kind of faith Enoch had that, that we can learn from today? Uh, the writer of Hebrews is saying, I'm going to take you on a tour of men and women of faith who did great things for God because of their faith in God. And now as a result, they are listed in the hall of faith. They're listed in what's kind of like a museum. How many people have been to a museum? You see all those old uh, antiquities and old prehistoric things and stuff like that. And they're to remind us of the fact that something took place a long time ago. And the writer of Hebrews is saying, hey, something, 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 took, long, something took place a long time ago that, that if, if, we're, if we're studious and we're desirous, we can find out what happened a long time ago so that we can be helped today. And that's what kind of like uh, scientists do and people who study history and fossils and things like that. They study all that stuff. They go digging and whatnot so they can learn what happened then so they can learn how to better uh, live today. The writer of Hebrews says, I'm going to take you New Testament saints, New Testament Christians on a tour of faith so that they can help you with believing the promises of God. The writer of Hebrew reaches back into the Old Testament for us, New Testament saints, for the purpose of showing that what worked for them will work for you if you have faith in God. Say, I got faith in God. I have faith in God. Turn to your neighbor and say, God's got some witnesses, God has some witnesses. that are going to show you something about believing God. About believing God. Now, I said before, Abel is going to uh, be our first witness. And we talked about Abel last week and the fact that Abel teaches us how to worship God by faith. And uh, we found out that uh, Abel brought us an acceptable sacrifice to God. It was, a, it was an animal sacrifice. And, and he killed the sacrifice and gave God the best. And, and the shedding of the blood of the animal sacrifice symbolized that when you come before God in faith to worship him, you have to come before God and deal with sin in your life. Hello, somebody. Because when God flew that animal and Adam and Eve taught their son how to worship God, that they had to have an animal sacrifice, which symbolized, which spoke to the sacrifice that Jesus was going to pay on the cross by shedding his blood. They, 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 they were actually teaching their child that, that the only way to get back in the presence of God, only way to worship God, to have true worship of God, is you got to deal with sin in your life. And one thing about worshiping God, whenever you get the praise of God to the place where you, you switch from praising God to worshiping God, where you switch from thanking God for just who he is, for just thinking, when you move from thanking God for what he's done, which is praise, to thanking God for who he is, which is worship, there's going to be something that transfers. Do you, I mean, you going to, what's, what's going to happen is God's going to start showing you yourself. He's going to start showing your sin, the sin in your life, the weakness in your life, so that you can enter into the Holy of Holies. Because the Bible says, only he that has clean hands shall get into the presence of God. So one thing about worshiping God, God starts talking to you about your sin in your life. About your attitude. About that unforgiveness and whatnot. So that when you, did, when you deal with that attitude, when you deal with that unforgiveness, you can walk in his presence cleansed and you can walk away out of his presence with a confidence and assurance. Hello, somebody, that you met with God. When you walk out of church today, you got to walk out of here with a confidence and, and, a, and assurance. Hey, I feel better. Me and God is all right. Oh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I got that sin out. I got that, that, that disobedience out. So we found, out, we found out that Abel taught us how to worship God by faith. Noah is going to come forth with his faith story. Sarah is, is going to come forth with her faith story. She's going to teach us something about faith. Abraham's going to teach us something about faith. It says there's going to, there's going to come forth. They're going to come forth to let you know that, that what God said and the faithfulness of God is the truth Nothing but the truth, so help me God. And so they're going to tell us and give us assurance that if we step on the word of God, God is going to be faithful to, to uh, come to pass, come to fruition, bring to pass that promise that he has for us. Now, if I was writing 
the putting these people, if I was the writer of Hebrew, I wouldn't put these people in there. Because a lot of these people have faults, have weaknesses. But yet God put them in the Hall of Fame. Now that ought to be encouragement to some folk here today. Amen. That just because you got weaknesses and whatnot does not disqualify you from getting up out of your puddle of guilt and condemnation and shame, feeling sorry for yourself. Get up out of that guilt and get up out of that puddle of, of, of a feeling bad and run on, lift your head up, receive God's forgiveness, and run on and see what the end gonna be. Amen. Hello, somebody. Amen. God used some imperfect people to illustrate what it means to, to believe God. Now, some of these people that God uses probably feel like some of us today when we step out on God's word and you don't see anything happening. A lot of these people that God uses in, out of the Old Testament probably felt like we feel, feel, some of us feel today. Maybe you feel like it's not working. Pastor, I took the scripture and I stood on the word of God and it's not working. Well, the Old Testament saints, some of them, when they stand, stood on the word of God, they probably felt like it wasn't worth it, working. God uses Sarah as a woman of faith to show us something about trusting God. Now this woman, she laughed in the face of God. When God told her she's gonna have a baby beyond the years of childbearing. Hello, she probably felt like God is not working. How many people have ever felt like that? God is not working. Amen. Some of these Old Testament saints, they felt like this, that things were not going as intended. Some of them felt like they wanted to give up and turn back. Some of them felt like, it can't, I can't take it anymore, but God still puts them in the hall of faith. Some of them felt like quitting the faith. Some of them, some of them uh, felt like, hey, hey, this thing isn't worth it. Uh, I, I've been sowing seeds and now I haven't gotten a harvest. But the writer of Hebrews wants us to know is this, the just shall live by faith. Faith is not an event that we, that we uh, all of a sudden start changing our thinking and run to the house of God and say, God, I'm going through a problem. Help me in this problem and whatnot. And then, then leave God after God solves the problem. No, faith is not an event. Faith is how we roll. Amen. Faith is our, our modus, of op, modus operandi. It's, it's how we live. Just as a, a doctor lives or a dentist lives by his, his dental tools, you and I as Christian believers ought to live by the word of God. Now, I want to encourage everybody to stay awake, don't go to sleep. And I know you can do it. I know you can do it because last night I saw y'all just getting, some of y'all just getting down and whatnot. I mean, just having a good time. Eyes were open and everything. Now, I understand that some people might go to sleep in church or whatnot because sleep, when you, some people, when they go to church, it's so peaceful. I mean, the home is chaos. And so I can understand that. If you're sleeping because of that, you got chaos in the home. And the only place you can find some peace is when you go to church, then, then go ahead and sleep a little bit. But if you can dance like Wild Bill Hickok, as long as the music going, and then come to church and sleep, then something's wrong. Then you're not walking the way you need to walk with God. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. Some of us may have felt just like some of the Old Testament saints in the Old Testament. <clears throat> yeah, let me drink the water. <laughs> now, if, I, if, I, if I'm preaching, I do like this. I'm just having a brain lapse from staying up too late myself. <laughs> <laughs> and dancing. <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong with dancing. My old pastor used to say, I don't care how high you jump, as long as you walk straight when you hit the ground. Amen. All these Old Testament saints knew one thing, though, and they knew this. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Amen. Faith is simply taking God at his word. Faith is simply believing that something exists beyond what you can see. Jesus said it like this, uh, if thou can believe, all things are possible. One of the greatest abilities God has given us is our ability to believe. If you can believe, you can be successful. If you believe, you can overcome the mistakes of the past. If you believe, you can, you can, you can go further in God's destiny for your life. There's an incredible power 
in what we believe. What you believe is greater than the doctor's report. Yeah. Now, we respect medical science. How many people respect medical science? Yeah. But God has the final say. Yeah. When you get in agreement with God and believe what he says about you, then what you believe can supersede all natural law. <laughs> The Apostle Paul uh, talked about how great the power of believing is. He talked about the fact that we might, he prayed that we might know the, the greatness of the power of God when you believe him. And I like when Jesus, when he, when he met two blind men, two blind men came up to him and they said, Jesus, uh, 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 you know, we, we want something from you. Jesus said, what do you want? He said, we want to see. And then Jesus said, do you believe that I'm able to heal you? They said, yes, Lord. Then this is what Jesus said. He said, then be it done unto you according to your faith. Not according to Jesus' faith. Jesus said, according to your faith. Yeah. And so we see that uh, faith is so important. Paul, Paul talked about it in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 15 through 19. He said, if you got faith, you can receive all the things that God has waiting for you that are in the unseen realm. Everybody say in the unseen realm. In the unseen realm. If you want to really understand faith, you have to understand that there are unseen realities beyond the natural realm that you cannot see with these natural eyes. If you don't understand faith, you're going to miss out on a whole lot of things that God has for you. Because you're only looking in the natural realm. But in the kingdom of God, there's two realms. There's a natural realm and a spiritual realm. There's a natural realm and an invisible realm. And Jesus uh, demonstrated that to us graphically by doubting Thomas. Doubting Thomas. Uh, he was the only one of the disciples after everybody understood and knew that Jesus had resurrected from the grave. Thomas said, I don't believe Jesus got up out of the grave. I saw him down the cross. I saw blood. I saw blood come down his head. I saw him. I saw the blood coagulate on his arms and whatnot and get stiff and, and get hard and scaly. I, I saw his body when they were pulling him off the cross. Uh, he, it was real stiff. And I saw him put Jesus in the tomb. I don't believe. I ain't going to believe until I, I, I put my hand in his side and put my fingers in the palm of his hand. Now, thank God for Jesus. Because he did not leave Thomas in that predicament. Because he knew if he left Thomas thinking like that, Thomas was going to miss out on all the other blessings. So Jesus visited Thomas. Because he heard Thomas was talking doubt and unbelief. And Jesus said, Thomas, touch my hands, touch my side. Thomas touched his hand in his side. And Thomas said, oh, my Lord, my God. And Tom, Jesus said to Thomas, Thomas, you believe because you see. But more blessed are those who have not seen yet believe. In the kingdom of God, you believe first, then you see. It's the other way around. It's not in, the, in the natural realm, you have to see it. The, 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 in this natural realm, they say you got to see it first, then you believe it. But it, it's, in the, it's the, in the reverse in the spiritual realm. You got to believe it first before you see it. Because in the world, they say, you know, show me the money. You don't show me the money, I, I ain't, we, ain't, we ain't going nowhere. But in the kingdom of God, you don't have to have money. But what you do have to have is faith. <coughs> Hello, somebody. God has chosen the poor of this world to be rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom of God. And I said before last week, and I don't have time to, a whole lot of time to spend on that. But faith is like money. You go to the store, you got a lot of money, you can get a lot of things. It's the same way in the kingdom of God. If you got a lot of faith, you can get a lot of things that are in the unseen realm Hello, somebody that God has for you. And Jesus talked about two realms. He said, he said, uh, when you pray, pray our father who are in. Heaven. That's the unseen realm. OK. And so we got to understand if you're going to really understand faith, you got to understand there's some stuff. There's some deliverances. There's some prosperity. There's some promotion. There's some healing. There's some things that God has for you. But you can't see it with these natural eyes. You can only see it through the eyes of faith. Believe me that what God said is there. The Bible says we have angels encamped around us. Now, now you can't see angels. Anybody see any angels around them right now? But the Bible says that they're there. Hello, somebody. Now, what you got to do is you got to believe out of your heart what the word says is there without seeing any physical evidence. And that's faith. Hello, somebody. Okay, well, I don't want to spend too much time on that. But I do want to move along. Now, let's go to, uh, uh, the Bible says in uh, 
Let's look at Hebrews chapter 11, verse 5 and 6. Let's read that again. It says, By faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was found because God had translated, was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. Now, why did he please God? Now, in order, in order to find out why he pleased God, we got to go to Genesis chapter 5. <clears throat> Are y'all with me? Amen. How many people want to please God? Amen. Well, we're going to find out how uh, Enoch pleased God. It says in Genesis chapter 5, verse 21, And Enoch lived sixty and five years and begat Methuselah. And Enoch walked with God after he begat Methuselah. Three hundred years. Okay, so he was sixty-five years old, and then all of a sudden he had a baby by the name of Methuselah. And then from sixty-five years onward, for three hundred of those years onward, he walked with God. Now, I might be going to say, what happened? Why did he wait till 65? I don't know. He had a baby. Maybe he had a baby. Maybe he just felt more responsibility. I remember when my, my daughter, first daughter was born and whatnot. I remember I had a, just an overwhelming sense of responsibility. It's like my knees were shaking because I knew I had a responsibility now as a father to, to live right before my daughter. Now, maybe that happened to Methuselah. I don't know. But it took him 65 years to start acting right and start believing God. So don't feel bad. You say, Pastor, I'm old now, and I don't know if God could use me. Or I can do something for God. No, if, you, if, you, if you're up to 65, at least it says that you can start believing God. Amen. It ain't too late to believe God. It says that Enoch walked with God after he begat Methuselah 300 years and begot sons and daughters. And all the days of Enoch were 365 years. And Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. Now, let's look at this. It says, Enoch walked with God. So Enoch had to track where God was going to go on a walk with him. The Bible says that Enoch walked with God. Now, the reason why he pleased God is that he walked with God. And it takes faith to please God when we're walking with God. Because you're, going to, you're dealing with a God you do not see, and you're dealing with things about God that are invisible. In other words, to please God, you must walk with God. Everybody say, to please God, to please God. you must walk with God. You must walk with God. So we found out in Hebrews that, that Enoch pleased God, and we found out in Genesis, he pleased God because he walked. If you are not walking with God, let's reverse this. If you are not walking with God, then you are not pleasing God. How many people walking with God today? Amen. Enoch pleased God because he walked with God. And if you're not walking with God, you're not pleasing God. Because the Bible says Enoch pleased God by walking with God. Most people want God to walk with them. Hmm. Most people are like this, God, uh, I'm going to make this decision over here, and I want you to bless it. <laughs> God, uh, I'm going to do this today, and God, come on, follow me. Follow me over here, and I'm involved in this right now, and I'm doing this project, and I'm doing this thing over here, God. And Come on, God, come on. Come on, stand with me, God. Come on, God, uh, uh, help me over here. <laughs> Most people... Want God to walk with them. But that's not what God is requiring. God is requiring that we walk with him. A lot of people say, you know, God bless America. Well, God's not going to bless America until America blesses God. It says Enoch walked with God. So Enoch had to track where God was going and, and, and go and have a walk with him. You know, if you want to find out, if you want to walk with God, you're going to have to go track him. You're going to have to go searching for him. You're going to have to go seeking him out. You're going to have to go uh, hungry uh, after him. Now, the New Testament phrase for walk with God is to walk in the spirit. When you walk in the spirit, you take a step after a step after a step after a step. Walking in the spirit is not a leap 
skip, and I hop, and then sit down. <laughs> Hello, somebody. Some people start out real good with God. They start running real hard and whatnot, running real hard, and all of a sudden they, 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 they take a little hiatus. <laughs> Hello, somebody. Walking with God is a continual, day by day, step by step, walk with God. It's not a sprint, it's not a dash, it's not a leap. It's not a skip, it's not a hop, it's not a lay down, it's not a go on vacation from God and then get back up and go on with God. <laughs> no, it's a step by step, it's ongoing, it's progressive, it's continual. Enoch walked with God for 300 years. It says Enoch was 65. Then after he had Methuselah, who was one of the oldest, lived the man who lived the longest here on planet Earth, after he had that baby, Methuselah, he walked with God for 300 years. Now to walk with God is this. It is to bring God to bear on the steps you take in your life. It means that God is a part of your decision making. God is a part of your thought process. God is a part of your deliberation. God is a part of your calendar. God is a part of your schedule. God is a part of your relationship. God is a part of your money. God is a part of everything that you get involved with because you're walking with God. Every step you make, every decision you make, every place you go, you are attached to God and you are aligning yourself with him. You're walking close with him. You're, you're, you're intimate with him. You're, you're so close to him that, that, that you can take steps that he, he takes and you can, you can go places where he, he's going and he has gone and you can go exactly where God is at. And I thank God for that song that... Uh, I mean, that dance that Kelsey performed for us. What was it? Uh, the presence of the Lord? Want to be where you are. Want to be, how many people want to be where God's glory is, where he is? Well, if you're going to do that, you're going to have to walk close to God. A day-by-day -day step. We're walking with God. If I say I walked in the rain, I'm explaining the atmosphere or the environment in which I walk. I walked in a wet environment because I walked in the rain. That's the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. So to walk in the spirit, to walk with God, is to walk in the atmosphere that God is controlling every move. See, you don't have to worry. One thing about walking with God, you don't have to worry about anything because you're walking with him and he's controlling. He's controlling the atmosphere and everything around you is being controlled by God because you're walking Hallelujah. with God. And he's controlling the storms and he's controlling the difficulty and he's involved in the hardship and he's involved in, in the terrible thing or the challenges that you're confronted with because you're walking with God and it's okay. Because you're walking with God and he's controlling the atmosphere. Now, walking with God assumes something. I remember the first scripture me and my wife, we learned when we was in premarital counseling some 30-something years ago was Amos 3.3. It was just shake my hand. You got to get up right now. I'm, I'm going to have you come up. I had to prep my wife. I said, honey, I'm going to use you in my illustration today. So she said, what, what you going to do? I said, what you going to do? I said, just, just be peppy. Just be peppy when I call you. Be peppy. Just be peppy. Just, you know, I'm not going to tell you what I'm going to do. Just, just get up there real quick. <laughs> But the first scripture we learn with Amos 3.3. How can two walk together? Unless they agree. So walking with God assumes something that you're in agreement with what he's doing. Amen. That you're all on the same page. Mm -hmm. Because see, it's hard to walk with somebody you don't agree with. Amen. Hello? God's not going to walk with you if you're not in agreement with him. Amen. So our job is to get into agreement with God so that we can walk with God. It says, how can two walk together unless they agree? So if we're out doing our own thing, we're not walking with God. We're doing our own thing. God is not walking or we're not walking with God. 
hard to walk with folks that you don't have a relationship with or comfortable with. You have a relationship with God by getting in agreement with his word, by yielding to him, and by getting involved in what God is involved in. So one of the first things we need to understand is that to walk with God means that we got to get in agreement with God. Turn to your neighbor and say, get in agreement with God. Get in agreement with God. The you know, Bible says in Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2, Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by renewing of your mind, that you might prove what is that good and acceptable will of God. When you come into the kingdom of God, that means you're going to have to have some of your, your thinking transformed because the way you do things in the kingdom is opposite from the way the world thinks. The world does it outside the kingdom. Amen. So we're going to have to get an agreement. We're going to have to get into the word of God. We're going to have to start obeying God even more. The second major thing Enoch teaches us about walking with God, in order to walk with God, you have to walk close to God. Hello, somebody. Amen. Now, can you come on up, baby, please? <laughs> That's it. I like that. Sit, 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 baby. We can go everywhere, wherever God wants us to go. <laughs> if we just walk close together. Close together. Now, 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 you stand over here. It's hard to... He's a master communicator. He, he, in, fact, the fact that he wrote that book says that he got something to say to you. Amen. He's always talking. God never been alone. He never been by himself. He's always been God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. He always likes talking. He always wants to talk to people. He got something to say to you. He got something to say about your job today. He got something to say about your children. He got something to say about your health. He got something to say about your mind. He got something to say about this and about that and about this and about that. But here's, here's what you're going to have to do. In order to get with God, you're going to have to get right next to him because God speaks most of the time in a still, small yes, he does. voice. Oh, yeah, he has several ways that he can communicate. Now, he can communicate. The number one way he communicates through the word. He can communicate through an audible voice. He spoke to Moses faith to faith. He can talk to you through angels, messengers. He can speak to you through dreams, visions, prophets, godly counsel, gifts of the spirit, circumstances, desires of the heart. But one of the ways he speaks to you aside from the word is that he speaks to you spirit to spirit. And God, he don't shout real loud. He's not going to shout over all that stuff that's in your head. Because he, he speaks in a whisper. Amen. So that means you got to be real close to him. Okay? And we see this when Elijah, I don't have time to go to it. Remember Elijah ran from the, uh, uh, the woman that said, Jezebel, who said, she, Ahab, was it Jezebel said she's going to cut his head off? Yeah. And God said, Je and Elijah ran, he was so afraid of that woman and whatnot. I mean, he just got through calling fire down, but this woman came up and said something that caused, that caused, caused fear to come up in his heart. And he started running. He, he ran to a tree, and God, God found him out of a tree and said, John, he said, uh, Elijah, what you doing? And get up out of here. Then he encouraged him, gave him sleep and whatnot, fed him. And then God says, I want you to go up, and I want you to go to the open of the, the head of this cave, and I want you to look for me. And it says that, 
When Elijah went to the front of the cave to look for God, he saw an earthquake mm -hmm. and he saw a storm, but God was not in the earthquake and God was not in the storm. That lets us know that if you try to see God in the big things, you may miss him in the little thing. Mm -hmm. See, a lot of people want to zoom and the boom and the boom and the miracle, boom, boom, boom. But if you always look for God in the big things, you might miss his still small voice. See, when you got saved, God put the Holy Spirit on the inside of you to speak to your recreated spirit and your recreated spirit speaks to your mind. How many people had, had, had like a, you heard a voice or like a, your conscience? How many people ever heard your conscience? Your conscience is the Holy Spirit speaking to you. Some of us only hear like condemning, you know, things like do this right, do that right. But they don't, they, they kind of think that's all God do when he talks. But he also tells us things that will bless us. It's just like when I was praying for a wife, I said, Lord, I can't pick no wife. I don't know how. I know I'm just afraid. See, I, God, I've been through a divorce and whatnot. And I saw my parents go fighting and, and, and all that kind of stuff. I said, God, I don't want to go through that. I don't want to make a mistake. I said, God, uh, help me out in picking a wife. I said, God, help me out. You pick her. Because I know if you pick her, I ain't going to make no mistake. And God spoke to my spirit. After me and Karen had a day, she said, God said, this is the one. I said, okay, God, you said that's the one. I want him. I want him. I want him. Because I know God knows tomorrow. But I, the point I want to make is that God spoke to me in my spirit. Okay? But it was a still, small voice. And if you're not, if you're not, if you're not walking close with God, real close with God, you ain't going to hear his still, small voice. Because it's in a whisper. A lot of people, I can't hear God, I can't hear that. Then you need to go someplace and shut down and get quiet and consecrate yourself and shut out all the confusion and all the activities and all the words in your mind because God's not going to shout over that and say, I'm talking to you. No, you're going to have to get quiet to hear God's still small voice saying, go this way. Shut up. Go say you're sorry. Go to Bible study. Your answer is at Bible study. Your answer is in serving the Lord. Your answer is in, in, in not you being so proud, but being humble and quiet. So to walk with God, we have to get close to God because often <laughs> God speaks in a still, small voice. And then lastly, you might be here, you might say, well, what's in it for me? What's, if, what's in it for me if I walk with God? What was the payoff, God? Come on. Oh, yeah, come on, God. All that getting into the Word of God and serving God and giving and Trust in God's word. What's the payoff for me? Well, I don't know how it's going to be for you, but I can tell you how it might be for you. And I can tell you how it might be for you by how it was for Enoch. The Bible says that Enoch walked with God and he got to such a point where he was walking so close with God that he was not. Mm -hmm. Now, we don't have time to go into it, but in Jude, Enoch spoke against the unrighteousness of his day. And people in that unrighteous day were talking about Enoch, saying, Enoch, you stupid, talking about God's going to do this, God's going to do that, and what have you. He's, God's going to bring judgment for disobedience. God testified by taking Enoch out of here without dying that what he said was true. What's the payoff? What am I saying the payoff said? God will validate you. God will affirm you. God will authenticate you. God will say, hey, what this person been saying all along and how this person been believing me and walking with me all along, I'm going to bless them in front of everybody Amen. to testify to them and to the world that, that, that they walk with me. I think about 
uh, in the book of Acts, the Bible says these men, they, the, the, the ungodly, the, un, the worldly said these disciples of Jesus, after Jesus had left, they said these disciples of Jesus, they're uneducated men. But we can tell that they've been with Jesus. Now let me close with this. God validated the disciples. And God will validate you if you walk with him. The woman with the alabaster box. It's a beautiful illustration that God will validate your walking with him. Right before Jesus was getting ready to go to the cross, Jesus probably was weary and tired. And this woman, doesn't say her name, she saw Jesus. She probably saw the stress in his face. She was walking so close that she could see the weariness. And she was led by the Spirit. And God, by the Spirit, told her to go get a very precious ointment and encourage Jesus. And she bought a very expensive ointment to encourage Jesus. She took that. It was a year's worth of wages. And she was doing it to encourage him because she knew, she knew that her man of God, Jesus, was weary and tired and was getting ready to go through the biggest battle of his entire life. He was getting ready to go on the cross and die for the sins of the whole human race. And what she did, she went and got a very expensive bottle of perfume. Years worth of work, wages. And she took it and anointed Jesus. Bam. And Jesus stood up. And he said, woman, what you just did for me. Wherever the gospels preach. All over the world. Wherever the gospels preach. Wherever my name is mentioned. And what I stood for, because you've done this for me, it's going to be spoken of as a memorial unto you. The three Hebrew boys, our God will deliver us, O king. King said, I'm going to throw you in the fire if you don't bow down. He said, our God will deliver us, O king. But if he don't, be it known unto you, O king, that we ain't going to bow down. You know what? They didn't bow down and Jesus came in the fire with them and got them out of that fire. And the king said, they ain't no God, but the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to a high position in, in the government. What did God do? What am I saying? God will validate you. He gonna let other people know that you walking with God by the things, good things that are happening around you. In the Hebrews, the book of Hebrews, it says, and the elders obtain a good report. That's the payoff. A good testimony that you have walked with God and God is pleased with your walk. Let's everyone stand.